Hi, welcome to our refrigerator essentials for fat loss video. Let's get into it. refrigerator essentials for fat loss video. I'm Melissa and this is Jessica and today we're going to be going through all of our refrigerator essentials, protein, carbs, fats, and even some of our favorites. And right now we're going to be starting with protein. Cool. So let's start with breakfast foods. To start, we have eggs. <laughs> what do you want me to say about them? <laughs> Nothing. Eggs. Eggs also have egg whites. So the reason why I have both eggs and egg whites, especially if we're in our fat loss phase, one thing that I like to do is maybe instead of doing like two whole eggs, I'll do one egg and then I will do some egg white on the side to give myself more protein without all of the fat. That way you have more volume, but not so many calories. The reason why I like to get the liquid egg whites is because I hate to crack open the egg and then try to shuffle out the yolk part. And so it's just so much easier. Like if you're gonna have egg whites, it's easier just to pour get the liquid egg whites. This too though, you can put in things like your oat meal to give it a little bit more protein. To me, that just is an easy pour as opposed to like quick, said, quick and easy, quick and easy. Then we have our Canadian bacon, which is 97% fat free. We get this at Costco. It's so good. The macros are phenomenal on it, but you can have this as a snack, a Canadian bacon snack, or put it on a breakfast sandwich and it's really, really good. So Greek yogurt is absolute life. If you struggle to get protein in, Greek yogurt is gonna be your best friend. It's so versatile, you can do so many things with it. And three quarters of a cup is 18 grams of protein. For me, I like to take Greek yogurt, I like to top it with different fruit, you know, nuts, shaved coconut, and some honey, and that's one of my wow. favorite breakfasts. That sounds delicious. Okay, is. outside of breakfast though, you can make sour cream. You can make like sour cream, you can do like chip dip, the get What's like the, ranch packet, ranch yeah. seasoning, or you get onion soup, Lipton onion mm -hmm. soup secrets, mix it all together, and then you have a high protein, low calorie dip for veggies. Sounds delicious. It is. Next, always have some cold cuts in your refrigerator, just because you can eat them like late at night, you can just open up your refrigerator, pull them out, like pop this bad boy right on the scale, and just start eating out of the bag if you need to get protein in. It's also good to make sandwiches. You can also do like meat roll-ups or you can put it like shred it and put it on a salad. So. Honestly, that's one of my favorite go-tos because a lot of times during the week, if I'm so busy in between meetings or things like that, I don't have time to sit there and try to cook you know, ground meat or chicken or anything else to get my protein in. So for me, if I have, you know, bread, I can slap some cold cuts on it and voila, you have a sandwich. Easy, like 20 grams of protein. Easy peasy. You wanna talk about our favorite? Ugh, ground beef. This is just this also is life. all in the heart right here. Literally just need some pink Himalayan sea salt and you can eat this for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The thing with the ground beef is too, like you have the 96.4. The protein's gonna be high, fat content is gonna be low. Depending on what your calories are, or, you know, however many calories you have, if you struggle to get calories in, you don't have to get like 96.4 lean. You can get something that's 90.10 or even, you know, 85.15 yeah. because it's gonna give you more calories in, you know, a smaller amount. And then we also have the 99% lean ground turkey. Same kind of thing with this. These are both really great to have, and we love keeping these because they're so versatile. Like you can, make them as like ground beef, ground turkey, and just kind of and put them into bowls. You can put it in pasta sauce. You can do make meatballs out of them. You can make burgers out of them. Like there are so many different things that you can do with these meats. So it's always good to have some ground meat in your refrigerator. And I think you, you can bulk cook these, right? So sometimes what we do, you know, we'll kind of cook both at the same time, have the ground meat, ground beef going, ground turkey going, and then make that in bulk because it's gonna take the same amount of time to cook. And then like Melissa said, you have the freedom and flexibility to toss it with different sauces or spices later on in the week, but your protein's pretty much cooked. Last thing, milk. If you struggle to get protein in, Fairlife milk is a godsend. One cup of Fairlife milk, 13 grams of protein. So whether you drink this on the side, you put it in your cereal, or even you make a protein shake with it, you're automatically in one cup getting 13 grams of protein without feeling like you're totally full. So now that we're done with protein, let's move on to carbs. So now we're on to carbs. Let's start with fruit. I always have blueberries in my refrigerator. Blueberries are life, as Jess says with her yogurt, but like blueberries, literally, you can put them on anything and everything. I think just the- Or just pop them. Berries in general, like you have to have a variety of berries. 
but berries to me like they're so low calorie and you can have so many of them in terms of volume so that's why i feel like berries are you just you like to just talk over me Actually, i'm just saying that i love blueberries and then you want to that. throw in the other berries we got the point that you love blueberries. okay yep so raspberries strawberries i have some clementines in there see get the big thing of strawberries clementines in the fridge Yes, clementines in the fridge why do you refrigerate clementines they're supposed to be refrigerated do you want to pick up, pick yep. up the fries? Okay, so next thing that we do, jams or jellies or some other things that I do are like fruit butter. So I have fig butter or apple butter. Good variety. I like to put them on pancakes, like protein pancakes, protein waffles, or even on bagels. Like, you know, you do it egg whites on the side, some turkey bacon, and then a bagel and some mm. jam. That's yummy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Always, always, always have a bag of lettuce. You can do a lot with lettuce. You can put it in a bowl. You can make a salad. You can top a sandwich with it. Just endless possibilities with plain old lettuce. I think the thing with lettuce though, especially if you're in a fat loss phase, is that it gives you volume, right? So for me, when I my calories are lower, I like to make one big salad a day because it gives me more volume and it kind of keeps me full without giving me a ton of calories. We're gonna go on to English muffins here. We have three different types with of English muffins. I just have something to say about these because when me and Jess were coming up with our refrigerator essential list, whatever we called it, Jess is like, put English muffins, put English muffins on the list. And I was like, wait a second, English muffins don't go in the refrigerator. That's definitely a pantry essential. So we're having a debate. I know where this comes from. It's because mom always put English muffins in the refrigerator. Yeah, now I'm questioning my whole They reality. don't go in the refrigerator. Cause she's Do like- English muffins they go get... in the refrigerator? Yeah. Well, they're not in the store, but then I feel, like they're not in the refrigerator in the store, but then I feel like when they get home, you have to put them in the fridge, otherwise don't they turn moldy? I don't no. know where you live, but my, my English muffins don't turn moldy in the pantry. Mm. Anyways, bonus, the side of our pantry, you get English muffins are great for carbs. This one specifically is so good. We have regular English muffins, we have the light English muffins, which are a little bit lower calorie, and then these are new. They are the cinnamon and protein English muffins. They're so, so good. They act like they don't taste artificial at all. I do this with a little bit of almond butter and it's phenomenal. So now that we've got carbs out of the way, let's go to fats. So now let's move on to fats. Cheese, crumbled cheese, one of our favorites. <laughs> you are so awkward. I don't know what to say. Cheese is a staple in our fridge. I mean, we have crumbled feta cheese here. We have crumbled goat cheese here. What you don't see are things like um, low fat shredded mozzarella, low baby fat bell cheese, shredded cheddar, string cheese, baby bell. Yeah, any kind of cheese is gonna be great for getting in fats. It's you also good protein. with protein. There's also like, a good amount of protein in Five cheese. Grams of protein in an ounce. Yeah, like this one has four grams of protein in it. So it's a good mix, but definitely um, cheeses are good for fats. Definitely have mayo. I love putting this on sandwiches, especially when I cut out dairy for a little bit if I have any digestive issues. Mayo is usually a good go-to to get in some fats. I do have light mayo when I'm in, when I'm in a deficit, but if you are trying to get more calories in and you're having a hard time, just go for the straight, you know, full on mayo. I love to mix this with hot sauce to like have something that is a little bit different to put on your sandwich. So I love light mayo. Thanks for your input. You're welcome. Butter. So this is the thing. I feel like when most people are dieting, people are like, I can't have butter. So I have to either go with something like, I can't believe it's not butter or some type of a spray. Don't be afraid to eat the butter, especially if you're struggling to get calories in. Like even if your fat loss calories or something like 2,300 calories, you know, a tablespoon of butter is 100 calories and it's not gonna make you feel full. So butter is definitely one. Pesto, I love pesto. I, for the longest time, was like, oh my God, like can't pesto is so much fat in it. You can't have this. Honestly, like a little bit goes a long way. And so if you need to get fats in, this is a great to put on pasta. You can put it on like rice with chicken. Like it's so, so good. You can make dressings with it. So basil pesto is one of my favorites for getting in fats. And then you want to talk about the dressing. Yeah, so salad dressings are, you know, another staple, especially if you are in a fat loss phase having, like they said, that one like bulky salad a day in order to give yourself some more volume. I tend to opt for like lower fat dressings. I love Bolt House Farms. They have dressings that are like more flavorful, but they're really low in calories. So two tablespoons of this are only 35 calories, you know, so you can even mix it and cut it with a little bit more vinegar or something like that. And it gives you, you know, it goes a longer way. You can put it on sandwiches too. Big fan of that. Thanks for your input. You're welcome. 
Okay, and then the last one that we have is one of my favorites. I have this every single morning. It's Chobani oat milk, extra creamy. So you can get whichever kind you want. This one has eight grams of fat in it. So if you want, if you, if you, again, if you have a hard time getting your calories in, things like this are gonna be really helpful for you to have more calories for a small amount. So I do this in my coffee every morning. Any kind of oat milk that's not, you know, like low fat is gonna be a great option for this. You can do half and half, you can do whole milk, like really anything like that is gonna be perfect for getting fats in. Before we get into our favorites, we did create a refrigerator essentials for fat loss cheat sheet that's linked in the description below. So go ahead and download that and let's get back to it. So now let's share some of our favorites that are in our fridge. So these are phenomenal to have these coffee creamers. A little bit goes a long way. So even if like you want your coffee to be be sweeter but you don't want to put a lot of sugar in it if you use like half and half or oat milk like in your coffee for cream and then you just dump a little bit this in, a little bit of this in there it's just gonna give it a little bit of sweetness and flavor so this one is the cinnamon roll and this one is the Italian sweet cream which sounds a little bit sexual but that's okay these creamers are really good um, I know that you like yeah. Almond milk, so right? I, I put oat milk or regular milk in my tea because I don't drink coffee So I usually have tea for breakfast, but almond milk is one of my go-to's for oats So I, us I usually have oats every morning um, and like I said with the egg whites I normally pour egg whites into my oats to give us more protein and then I use almond milk instead of regular milk to kind of keep calories down So almond milk is one of my go-to's you can also use this to mix with protein powder if you don't want just straight water So if like I like to take chocolate protein powder mix it with some almond milk so it makes it a little a bit creamier and almost tastes like chocolate milk. Mm, that sounds yummy, Jess. Let's do the whole pickle situation. Ooh. So all the pickled things. Pickled things. Okay, so we love pickles. Pickles are delicious. Jalapenos are my downfall, almost to the point where it's not okay. Mm. So jalapenos are really good. If you don't like spicy banana peppers, they'll give you a little bit of the vinegar. And then jardiniera is just it's so, so good. good. <laughs> Especially if you are in a deficit, if you are dieting and you're hungry, like you can chow on these bad boys like all day long. Obviously, you measure them. You pair but... these with a diet soda. Oh yeah, it's so good. Yeah, a sun yeah. kissed, a root beer, and any type of pickled food. It's the vinegar, it's the salt it's and the, the vinegar. vinegar. Exactly. So all the pickled foods are very much our favorites. Yes, um, we love that. What else? So let me talk about sauces. So I have Chick-fil-A sauce. I put this on everything. Ground turkey, like so 99% lean ground turkey, some of this. I do this in my Big Mac bowls. Oh, I mix this, I mix these two together actually. So the barbecue sauce and the Chick-fil-A sauce, you only get a little bit of this and this and it like together is just like, it's it's really good. Okay, let's try it. All right, I'll try it tonight. Okay. <laughs> what other sauces do we have? Hot sauce. Hot sauce. Hot sauce goes on everything. Like I said to you guys, if you don't just like plain mayo, but you're also looking for something a little bit more to go on, like sandwiches or bowls, mixing some light mayo with hot sauce is amazing. Sauce. sauce. Mustard, like the grainy coarse mustard. Again, if you can mix this with like a, a light mayonnaise and get like a, a different type of topping, we put it on top of salmon, potatoes, things like that. So that's really good. Salsa is always a good go-to. Okay. Yeah, well, salsa, sal good. salsa like Mexican bowls, things like that, or even um, you know some good thin chips on the corn, like on the side, and you can have that as a snack. Ketchup, love ketchup. I usually get the 50% less sugar um, just because I'm in a dieting phase right now. So loved having this one. This is our favorite dressing. Like, let me just tell you something. They don't have this in Texas. At least I have never seen it in a grocery store, so I have to Amazon Prime this to my house and I just get it in bulk because it's that good. You can never find it in New York either. Like the stores will have one on the shelf. So whenever I see this on the shelf in like more than one quantity, I will literally hoard it. I just want to make a note. This one, it's the Ken Steakhouse Light Italian. They have the Northern Light Italian in stores and they have a lot of it and they have a lot of it because it sucks. This is the good one, yeah. not the northern one. So make this sure you get this one. Okay, minced garlic. Melissa loves to make fun of me for minced garlic because she says I'm a lazy cook, but no one has time to sit there and chop garlic at every single meal. So if you're dieting and you're sick of boring meals and you want it to actually taste flavorful, minced garlic is going to be one of your best friends. When you get minced garlic, make sure it's the one in water, not in oil. Otherwise you're just adding a bunch of calories and that's not good for a fat loss phase. Unless you need more calories, correct. Okay. Last so but not good. least, fat-free cool, cool Whip. It's so good, like you can put this on pancakes. Like I like to do like a fruit parfait at night in a little oh, pretty okay. like little bowl and then you just dollop some of this on top of it. It's really good, how do you like it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't usually um, 
I don't usually eat this, but sometimes what I will do is if I take Greek yogurt and I'll put a little yes. bit of pudding mix into it and then like crumble some Oreos or things like that and then top this on top of it. It's really good, but for me, this belongs in a freezer. So that's interesting you keep this in the fridge. I just disagree. It says it... keep frozen on the label, but I mean, it's too hard in the freezer. Yeah, I mean, I get that, so. It's, but it's the perfect consistency. Interesting. So these anyway. are our favorites. Well, that wraps it for our refrigerator essentials for fat loss. Hope this was helpful for you guys. And if we missed anything that are your favorites, make sure to let us know in the comments below.